Sega Games Co., Ltd. Stylized as Sega is a Japanese multinational video game developer and publisher headquartered in Tokyo. Its international branches, Sega of America and Sega Europe, are respectively headquartered in Irvine, California and London. Sega's arcade division, once part of Sega Corporation, has existed as Sega Interactive Co., Ltd., also a Sega Holdings subsidiary, since 2015. Sega was founded by Martin Bromley and Richard Stewart as Nihon Goraku Busan on June 3, 1960. The company became known as Sega Enterprises, Ltd. after acquiring Rosen Enterprises, an importer of coin-operated games. Sega developed its first coin-operated game with Periscope in the late 1960s. In 1969, Sega was sold to Gulf and Western Industries. Following a downturn in the arcade business in the early 1980s, Sega began to develop video game consoles, starting with the SG-1000 and Master System, but struggled against competitors such as the Nintendo Entertainment System. In 1984, Sega executives David Rosen and Hayao Nakayama led a management buyout of the company with backing from CSK Corporation. Sega released its next console, the Sega Genesis, known as the Mega Drive outside North America, in 1988. Although it was a distant third in Japan, the Genesis found major success after the release of Sonic the Hedgehog in 1991 and briefly outsold its main competitor, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, in the U.S. However, later in the decade, Sega suffered commercial failures such as the 32X, Sega Saturn, and Dreamcast consoles. In 2001, Sega stopped manufacturing consoles to become a third-party developer and publisher, and was acquired by Sammy Corporation in 2004. In the years since the acquisition, Sega has been more profitable, but has been criticized for prioritizing quantity of game releases over quality. Sega produces multi-million selling game franchises including Sonic the Hedgehog, Total War, and Yakuza, and is the world's most prolific arcade game producer. It also operates amusement arcades and produces other entertainment products, including Sega Toys. Sega is a subsidiary of Sega Sammy Holdings, a corporate conglomerate with over 60 individual subsidiaries. Topic. History Topic. Origins and arcade success 1940 In 1940, American businessmen Martin Bromley, Irving Bromberg, and James Humpert formed Standard Games in Honolulu, Hawaii. Their aim was to provide coin-operated amusement machines to military bases as the increase in personnel with the onset of World War II would create demand for entertainment. After the war, the founders sold standard games and established service games, named for the military focus. After the United States government outlawed slot machines in its territories in 1951, Bromley sent employees Richard Stewart and Ray Lemaire to Tokyo to establish Service Games of Japan, providing coin-operated slot machines to U.S. bases in Japan. A year later, all five men established Service Games Panama to control its various entities. The company expanded over the next seven years to include distribution in South Korea, the Philippines, and South Vietnam. The name Sega, an abbreviation of Service Games, was first used in 1954 on the Diamond Star, a slot machine. Service Games of Japan was dissolved on May 31, 1960. On June 3, Bromley established two companies to take over its business activities, Nihon Goraku Busan and Nihon Kikai Sizo, which between them purchased all of Service Games of Japan's assets. 
Kikai Sizo, doing business as Sega, Inc., focused on manufacturing slot machines, while Goraku Busan, doing business under Steward as Udomatic, Inc., served as a distributor and operator of coin-operated machines, particularly jukeboxes. The companies merged in 1964. David Rosen, an American officer in the United States Air Force stationed in Japan, launched a two minute photo booth business in Tokyo in 1954. This company became Rosen Enterprises, and in 1957 began importing coin operated games to Japan. In 1965, Nihon Goraku Busan acquired Rosen Enterprises to form Sega Enterprises, Ltd. Rosen was installed as the CEO and Managing Director, while Stewart was named President and Lemaire was the Director of Planning. Shortly afterward, Sega stopped leasing to military bases and moved its focus from slot machines to become a publicly traded company of coin-operated amusement machines. Its imports included Rock Ola jukeboxes, pinball games by Williams, and gun games by Midway Manufacturing. Because Sega imported second-hand machines that required frequent maintenance, it began constructing replacement guns and flippers for its imported games, beginning the transition from importer to manufacturer. According to former Sega director Akira Nagai, this led to the company developing their own games. The first electromechanical game Sega manufactured was the submarine simulator Periscope, released worldwide in the late 1960s. It featured light and sound effects considered innovative, and was successful in Japan. It was exported to malls and department stores in the Europe and the United States, and helped standardize the 25 cent per play cost for arcade games in the U.S. Sega was surprised by the success, and for the next two years produced and exported between 8 and 10 games per year. Despite this, Sega eventually ceased exporting games. In 1969, Rosen sold Sega to American conglomerate Gulf and Western Industries, although he remained CEO. In 1974, Gulf and Western made Sega Enterprises, Ltd. A subsidiary of an American company renamed Sega Enterprises, Inc. Sega released Pong Tron, its first video-based game, in 1973. Despite late competition from Taito's hit arcade game Space Invaders in 1978, Sega prospered from the arcade game boom of the late 1970s, with revenues climbing to over US 100 million United States dollars by 1979. During this period, Sega acquired Gremlin Industries, which manufactured of microprocessor-based arcade games, and Esco Bueki Esco Trading, founded and owned by Hayao Nakayama. Nakayama was placed in charge of Sega's Japanese operations. In the early 1980s, Sega was one of the top five arcade game manufacturers active in the United States, as company revenues rose to $214 million. 1979 saw the release of Head On, which introduced the Eat the Dots gameplay Namco later used in Pac-Man. In 1981, Sega licensed and released Frogger, its most successful game until then. In 1982, Sega introduced the first game with isometric graphics, Zaxxon. Topic entry into the game console market 1982 to 1989 Following a downturn in the arcade business starting in 1982, Gulf and Western sold its North American arcade manufacturing organization and the licensing rights for its arcade games to Bally Manufacturing. Gulf and Western retained Sega's North American R&D operation and its Japanese subsidiary, Sega Enterprises, Ltd. With its arcade business in decline, Sega Enterprises, Ltd. President Nakayama advocated for the company to use its hardware expertise to move into the home console market in Japan, which was in its infancy at the time. This led to Sega's development of a computer, the SC3000. Learning that Nintendo was developing a games-only console, the Famicom, Sega developed its first home video game system, the SG-1000, alongside the SC-3000. 
Rebranded versions were released in several other markets worldwide. Due in part to the SG-1000's steadier stream of releases, and to a recall on Famicom units by Nintendo, the SG-1000 sold 160,000 units in 1983, far exceeding Sega's projection of 50,000 in the first year. However, by 1984 the Famicom began to outpace the SG-1000, in part because Nintendo boosted its games library by courting third-party developers, whereas Sega was hesitant to collaborate with companies with which they were competing in arcades. Shortly after the launch of the SG-1000, and the death of company founder Charles Bloodhorn, Gulf and Western began to divest its secondary businesses. Nakayama and Rosen arranged a management buyout of the Japanese subsidiary in 1984 with financial backing from CSK Corporation, a prominent Japanese software company. Sega's Japanese assets were purchased for $38 million by a group of investors led by Rosen and Nakayama. ISAO Okawa, chairman of CSK, became chairman, while Nakayama was installed as CEO of Sega Enterprises, Limited in 1985. Sega began working on the Mark III in Japan in 1985, a redesigned SG-1000. For North America, Sega rebranded the Mark III as the Master System, with a futuristic design intended to appeal to Western tastes. The Mark III was released in Japan in October 1985 at a price of 15,000 yen. Despite featuring more powerful hardware than the Famicom, it was unsuccessful at launch. As Nintendo required third-party developers not to publish their Famicom games on other consoles, Sega developed its own games and obtained the rights to port games from other developers, but they did not sell well. Sales of the Master System in the United States were handicapped by ineffective marketing by Tonka, who marketed the console there on Sega's behalf. By early 1992, production had ceased in North America. The Master System sold between 1.5 million and 2 million units in the region. This was less market share in North America than both Nintendo and Atari, which controlled 80% and 12% of the market respectively. However, the Master System was eventually a success in Europe, where it outsold the NES by a considerable margin. As late as 1993, the Master System's active installed user base in Europe was 6.25 million units. The Master System has had continued success in Brazil, where new versions continue to be released, distributed by Sega's partner in the region, Tectoy. By 2016, the Master System had sold 8 million units in Brazil. Its continuing success there makes the Master System the longest-lived console in history. Topic. Genesis, Sonic the Hedgehog, and mainstream success 1984. At the end of the 1980s, with the arcade game market once again in growth, Sega was one of the most recognized game brands. In arcades, it focused on releasing games to appeal to diverse tastes, including racing games and side-scrollers. For homes, Sega released the Master System successor, the Mega Drive, in Japan on October 29, 1988, though the launch was overshadowed by Nintendo's release of Super Mario Bros. 3 a week earlier. Positive coverage from magazines Famitsu and Beep, helped establish a following, but Sega only shipped 400,000 units in the first year. The Mega Drive could not overtake the venerable Famicom and remained a distant third in Japan behind Nintendo's Super Famicom and NEC's PC Engine throughout the 16-bit era. For the North American launch, where the console was renamed Genesis, Sega had no North American sales and marketing organization. After Atari declined an offer to market the console in the region, Sega launched the console through its own Sega of America subsidiary. Genesis was launched in a limited number of markets on August 14, 1989, and in the rest of North America later that year. 
The European version of the Mega Drive was released in September 1990. Former Atari executive and new Sega of America CEO Michael Katz developed a two-part strategy to build sales in North America. The first part involved a marketing campaign to challenge Nintendo and emphasize the more arcade-like experience available on the Genesis, with slogans including, Genesis does what Nintendon't. Since Nintendo owned the console rights to most arcade games of the time, the second part involved creating a library of recognizable games which used the names and likenesses of celebrities and athletes. Nonetheless, Sega had difficulty overcoming Nintendo's ubiquity in homes. Tasked by Nakayama to sell 1 million units in the first year, Katz and Sega of America sold only 500,000. As Alex Kidd, Sega's mascot during the late 1980s, had failed to catch on with the public, Sega sought a new flagship series to compete with Nintendo's Mario series. Artist Naoto Oshima proposed a hedgehog with red shoes he called Mr. Needlemouse. This character was renamed Sonic the Hedgehog, creating one of the best-selling video game franchises in history. The Sonic the Hedgehog gameplay originated with a tech demo created by Yuji Naka, who had developed an algorithm that allowed a sprite to move smoothly on a curve by determining its position with a dot matrix. Naka's prototype was a platform game that involved a fast-moving character rolling in a ball through a winding tube. This was fleshed out with Oshima's character design and levels conceived by designer Hirokazu Yasuhara. Sonic's color was chosen to match Sega's cobalt blue logo. His shoes were inspired by Michael Jackson's boots, and his personality by Bill Clinton's Kin Do attitude. Nakayama hired Tom Kalinske to replace Katz as CEO of Sega of America in mid 1990. Although Kalinske knew little about the video game market, he surrounded himself with industry savvy advisors. A believer in the razor and blades business model, he developed a four-point plan, cut the price of the Genesis, create a U.S.-based team to develop games targeted at the American market, expand the aggressive advertising campaigns, and replace the bundled game Altered Beast with Sonic the Hedgehog. The Japanese board of directors disapproved, but it was approved by Nakayama, who told Kalinsky, I hired you to make the decisions for Europe and the Americas, so go ahead and do it. Quote. In large part due to the popularity of Sonic the Hedgehog, which received acclaim, the Genesis outsold its main competitor, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, in the United States nearly 2 to 1 during the 1991 holiday season. By January 1992, Sega controlled 65% of the 16-bit console market, making it the first time Nintendo was not the console leader since 1985. Sega outsold Nintendo for four consecutive Christmas seasons due to the Genesis head start, lower price, and a larger library compared to the Super Nintendo at release. In 1990, Sega launched the Game Gear, a handheld console, to compete against Nintendo's Game Boy. The Game Gear was designed as a portable version of the Master System, and featured more powerful systems than the Game Boy, including a full-color screen, in contrast to the monochrome Game Boy screen. However, due to its short battery life, lack of original games, and weak support from Sega, the Game Gear did not surpass the Game Boy, selling approximately 11 million units. Sega launched the Mega CD in Japan on December 1, 1991, initially retailing at JP 49,800 yen. In North America, it was renamed the Sega CD and launched on October 15, 1992, with a retail price of US$299. It was released in Europe as the Mega CD in 1993. The add-on greatly expanded the potential size of Genesis games and upgraded its technical capabilities with a second, faster processor, vastly expanded system memory, a graphics chip that performed scaling and rotation similar to Sega's arcade games, and an additional sound chip. The Mega CD sold only 100,000 units during its first year in Japan, falling well below expectations. 
However, Sega had success with arcade games. In 1992 and 1993, the new Sega Model 1 arcade system board showcased Sega AM2's Virtua Racing and Virtua Fighter, the first 3D fighting game, which played a crucial role in popularizing 3D polygonal graphics. Topic. 32X, Saturn, and Falling Sales 1994-1999 Sega had begun work on the Genesis successor, the Sega Saturn, but according to former Sega of America producer Scott Bayless, Nakayama was worried that the Saturn would not be available until after 1994, and about the release of the Atari Jaguar around the time. As a result, the direction given was to have a second console release to market by the end of that year. In January 1994, Sega began to develop the 32X, a Genesis add-on which would serve as a less expensive entry into the 32-bit era. The decision was made by Nakayama and widely supported by Sega of America employees. The 32X would not be compatible with the Saturn, but would play Genesis games. Sega released the 32X on November 21, 1994 in North America, December 3, 1994 in Japan, and January 1995 in PAL territories, and was sold at less than half of the Saturn's launch price. After the holiday season, however, interest in the 32X rapidly declined. Sega released the Saturn in Japan on November 22, 1994, at 44,800 yen. Virtua Fighter, a faithful port of the popular arcade game, sold at a nearly 1 to 1 ratio with the Saturn at launch and was crucial to the system's early success in Japan. Sega's initial shipment of 200,000 Saturn units sold out on the first day, and it was more popular than new competitor Sony's PlayStation in Japan. In March 1995, Sega of America CEO Tom Kalinske announced that the Saturn would be released in the U.S. on Saturn Day, Saturday, September 2, 1995. However, Sega of Japan mandated an early launch to give the Saturn an advantage over the PlayStation. At the first Electronic Entertainment Expo E3 in Los Angeles on May 11, 1995, Kalinsky revealed the release price of US$399, including a copy of Virtua Fighter, and revealed that Sega had shipped 30,000 Saturns to toys. R. Us, Babbage's, Electronics Boutique, and Software etc. for immediate release. The Saturn's release in Europe also came before the previously announced North American date, on July 8, 1995, at a price of 399 liras and 99 centesimi. Within two days of the PlayStation's American launch on September 9, 1995, the PlayStation sold more units than the Saturn had in the five months following its surprise launch. Within its first year, the PlayStation secured over 20% of the U.S. video game market. Sega also underestimated the continued popularity of the Genesis. Sales of 16 bit games and consoles accounted for 64% of the market in 1995. Despite capturing 43% of the dollar share of the U.S. market and selling more than 2 million Genesis units in 1995, Kalinsky estimated that Sega could have sold another 300,000 consoles if they had been prepared for demand. On July 16, 1996, Sega announced that Shoichiro Iramajiri had been appointed chairman and CEO of Sega of America, while Kalinsky left Sega after September 30. A former Honda executive, Ira Majiri had been involved with Sega of America since joining Sega in 1993. Sega also announced that David Rosen and Nakayama had resigned from their positions, though both remained with the company. Bernie Stoller, a former executive at Sony Computer Entertainment of America, was named Sega of America's executive vice president in charge of product development and third-party relations. 
Stoller was not supportive of the Saturn, believing its hardware was poorly designed, and publicly announced at E3 1997 that, The Saturn is not our future. While Stoller had, No interest in lying to people. About the Saturn's prospects, he continued to emphasize its quality games, and later reflected that, We tried to wind it down as cleanly as we could for the consumer. At Sony, Stoller had opposed the localization of certain Japanese PlayStation games that he felt would not represent the system well in North America, and advocated a similar policy for the Saturn, although he later sought to distance himself from this perception. These changes were accompanied by a softer image in Sega's advertising, including removing the Sega Scream and holding press events for the education industry, Sega announced plans in January 1997 to merge with the Japanese toymaker Bandai. The merger, planned as a $1 billion stock swap whereby Sega would wholly acquire Bandai, was set to form a company known as Sega Bandai, Ltd. Though it was to be finalized in October of that year, it was called off in May after growing opposition from Bandai's mid-level executives. Bandai instead agreed to a business alliance with Sega. As a result of Sega's deteriorating financial situation, Nakayama resigned as Sega president in January 1998 in favor of Iramajiri. Nakayama's resignation may have in part been due to the failure of the merger, as well as Sega's 1997 performance. Stoller became CEO and president of Sega of America, the Saturn failed to take the lead in the market as the Genesis had. After the launch of the Nintendo 64 in 1996, sales of the Saturn and its games fell sharply, while the PlayStation outsold the Saturn 3 to 1 in the US in 1997. Following five years of declining profits, in the fiscal year ending March 31, 1998, Sega suffered its first parent and consolidated financial losses since its 1988 listing on the Tokyo Stock Exchange. Shortly before announcing the losses, Sega announced that it would discontinue the Saturn in North America to prepare for the launch of its successor. The Saturn lasted longer in Japan and Europe. The decision effectively left the Western market without Sega games for over one year. Sega suffered an additional 42.881 billion yen consolidated net loss in the fiscal year ending March 1999, and announced plans to eliminate 1,000 jobs, nearly a quarter of its workforce. With lifetime sales of 9.26 million units, the Saturn is considered a commercial failure, although its install base in Japan surpassed the Nintendo 64's 5.54 million. Sega's arcade divisions also struggled in the late 1990s, partly due to a market slump following competition from home consoles. Topic. Dreamcast and continuing struggles 1999 -2001. Despite taking massive losses on the Saturn, including a 75% drop in half-year profits just before the Japanese launch of the Dreamcast, Sega felt confident about its new system. The Dreamcast attracted significant interest and drew many pre-orders. Sega announced that Sonic Adventure, the next game starring company mascot Sonic the Hedgehog, would arrive in time for the Dreamcast launch and promoted the game with a large-scale public demonstration at the Tokyo Kakusai Forum Hall. However, Sega could not achieve its shipping goals for the Dreamcast's Japanese launch due to a shortage of power VR chipsets caused by a high failure rate in the manufacturing process. As more than half of its limited stock had been pre-ordered, Sega stopped pre-orders in Japan. Before the launch of the Dreamcast in Japan, Sega announced the release of its new arcade operation machine idea Naomi Arcade Board, which served as a cheaper alternative to the Sega Model 3. 
Naomi shared the same technology as the Dreamcast, allowing nearly identical home conversions of arcade games. The Dreamcast launched in Japan on November 27, 1998 at a price of JP 29,000 yen, and the entire stock sold out by the end of the day. Sega estimated that an additional 200,000 to 300,000 Dreamcast units could have been sold with sufficient supply. Iramajiri hoped to sell over 1 million Dreamcast units in Japan by February 1999, but less than 900,000 were sold, undermining Sega's attempts to build up a sufficient installed base to ensure the Dreamcast's survival after the arrival of competition from other manufacturers. Prior to the Western launch, Sega reduced the price of the Dreamcast to JP 19,900 yen, effectively making the hardware unprofitable but increasing sales. On August 11, 1999, Sega of America confirmed that Stoller had been fired, leaving Peter Moore, whom Stoller had hired as a Sega of America executive only six months before, to direct the launch. The Dreamcast launched in North America on September 9, 1999 at a price of $199, which Sega dubbed the 9th of September 99 for $199. 18 launch games were available in the U.S. Sega set a record by selling more than 225,132 Dreamcast units in 24 hours, earning $98.4 million in what Moore called the biggest 24 hours in entertainment retail history. Within two weeks, U.S. Dreamcast sales exceeded 500,000. By Christmas, Sega held 31% of the U.S. video game market by revenue. On November 4, Sega announced it had sold over 1 million Dreamcast units. Nevertheless, the launch was marred by a glitch at one of Sega's manufacturing plants, which produced defective GD-ROMs. Sega released the Dreamcast in Europe on October 14, 1999, at £200. While Sega sold 500,000 units in Europe by Christmas 1999, sales did not continue at this pace, and by October 2000, Sega had sold only about 1 million units in Europe. Though the Dreamcast launch had been successful, Sony still held 60% of the overall market share in North America with the PlayStation at the end of 1999. On March 2, 1999, in what one report called a highly publicized, vaporware-like announcement. Sony revealed the first details of its next-generation PlayStation, which Ken Kutaragi claimed would allow video games to convey unprecedented emotions. The same year, Nintendo announced that its next-generation console would meet or exceed anything on the market, and Microsoft began development of its own console, the Xbox. Sega's initial momentum proved fleeting as U.S. Dreamcast sales, which exceeded 1.5 million by the end of 1999, began to decline as early as January 2000. Poor Japanese sales contributed to Sega's 42 yen. 88 billion, 404 million dollars, consolidated net loss in the fiscal year ending March 2000, which followed a similar loss of 42.881 billion yen the previous year and marked Sega's third consecutive annual loss. Although Sega's overall sales for the term increased 27.4%, and Dreamcast sales in North America and Europe greatly exceeded the company's expectations, this increase coincided with a decrease in profitability due to the investments required to launch the Dreamcast in Western markets and poor software sales in Japan. At the same time, increasingly poor market conditions reduced the profitability of Sega's Japanese arcade business, prompting the company to close 246 locations. Moore stated that the Dreamcast would need to sell 5 million units in the U.S. by the end of 2000 to remain a viable platform, but Sega fell short of this goal with some 3 million units sold. Moreover, Sega's attempts to spur Dreamcast sales through lower prices and cash rebates caused escalating financial losses. 
In March 2001, Sega posted a consolidated net loss of 51.7 billion yen .5 million. While the PS2's October 26 US launch was marred by shortages, this did not benefit the Dreamcast as much as expected, as many disappointed consumers continued to wait for a PS2. The PS1, a remodeled version of the original PlayStation, was the best-selling console in the U.S. at the start of the 2000 holiday season. Eventually, Sony and Nintendo held 50 and 35% of the U.S. video game market respectively, while Sega held only 15%. Topic. Shift to third-party software development 2001-2003 Okawa replaced Iramajiri as president of Sega on May 22, 2000. Okawa had long advocated that Sega abandon the console business. Others shared this view. Sega co-founder David Rosen had always felt it was a bit of a folly for them to be limiting their potential to Sega hardware. And Stoller had suggested that Sega should have sold their company to Microsoft. In a September 2000 meeting with Sega's Japanese executives and the heads of its major Japanese game studios, Moore and Sega of America executive Charles Belfield recommended that Sega abandon its console business, the studio heads walked out. Sega announced a change of name from Sega Enterprises, limited to Sega Corporation effective November 1, 2000. Sega stated in a release that this was to display its commitment to network based entertainment. On January 23, 2001, Nihon Keizai Shimbun reported that Sega would cease production of the Dreamcast and develop software for other platforms. After an initial denial, Sega of Japan released a press release confirming they were considering producing software for the PlayStation 2 and Game Boy Advance as part of their new management policy. On January 31, 2001, Sega announced the discontinuation of the Dreamcast after March 31 and the restructuring of the company as a platform agnostic third party developer. The decision was Moore's. Sega also announced a Dreamcast price reduction to $99 to eliminate its unsold inventory, estimated at 930,000 units as of April 2001. After a further reduction to $79, the Dreamcast was cleared out of stores at $49.95. The final manufactured Dreamcast was autographed by the heads of all nine of Sega's first-party game studios, plus the heads of sports game developer Visual Concepts and audio studio Wave Master, and given away with 55 first-party Dreamcast games through a competition organized by GamePro. Okawa, who had loaned Sega $500 million in 1999, died on March 16, 2001. Shortly before his death, he forgave Sega's debts to him and returned his $695 million worth of Sega and CSK stock, helping the company survive the third party transition. He held failed talks with Microsoft about a sale or merger with their Xbox division. As part of the restructuring, nearly one-third of Sega's Tokyo workforce was laid off in 2001. 2002 was Sega's fifth consecutive fiscal year of net losses. After Okawa's death, Hideki Sato, a 30-year Sega veteran who had worked on Sega's consoles, became company president. Following poor sales in 2002, Sega cut its profit forecast for 2003 by 90%, and explored opportunities for mergers. In 2003, Sega began talks with Sammy Corporation a pachinko and pachislot manufacturing company and video game company Namco. On February 13, Sega announced that it would merge with Sammy. However, as late as April 17, Sega was still in talks with Namco, which was attempting to overturn the merger. Sega's consideration of Namco's offer upset Sammy executives. However, the day after Sega announced it was no longer planning to merge with Sammy, Namco withdrew its offer. 
In 2003, Sato and COO Tetsukamaya announced they were stepping down, with Sato replaced by Hisao Oguchi, the head of the Sega studio hitmaker. Sammy Takeover and Business Expansion 2003 to 2015 In August 2003, Sammy bought 22.4% of Sega's shares from CSK. In the same year, Sammy primary owner Hajime Satomi stated that Sega's activity would focus on their profitable arcade business as opposed to their loss incurring home software development. In 2004, Sammy completed a takeover by purchasing a controlling share in Sega Corporation for $1.1 billion. Sega Sammy Holdings, an entertainment conglomerate, was created. Sega and Sammy became subsidiaries of Sega Sammy Holdings, with both companies operating independently, while the executive departments merged. According to the first Sega Sammy annual report, the merger went ahead as both companies were facing difficulties. Satomi stated that Sega had been operating at a loss for nearly 10 years, while Sammy feared stagnation and over-reliance of its highly profitable Pachislot and Pachinko machine business, and wanted to diversify. Sega Sammy Holdings was structured into four parts, consumer business, video games, amusement machine business, arcade games, amusement center business, Sega's theme parks and arcades, and Pachislot and Pachinko business, Sammy's Pachinko and Pachislot business. In the console and handheld business, Sega found success with games targeted at the Japanese market such as the Yakuza and Hatsune Miku, Project Diva series. In Japan, Sega distributes games from smaller Japanese game developers and localizations of Western games. During 2003, Sega had plans of co-operating with John Wu on video games published by his Tiger Hill Entertainment Studio, but plans fell through. In amusement arcades, Sega's most successful games, such as Sangokushi Taisen and Border Break, continued to be based on network and card systems. Arcade machine sales incurred higher profits than their console, portable, and PC games on a year-to-year -year basis until the 2010s. In 2004, the GameWorks chain of arcades came under Sega ownership, until it was sold in 2011. In 2009, Sega Republic, an indoor theme park, opened in Dubai. The next year, Sega began providing the 3D imaging for Hatsune Miku's holographic concerts. In 2013, Index Corporation was purchased by Sega Sammy after going bankrupt. After the buyout, Sega implemented a corporate spin-off with Index, and rebranded its game assets as Atlas, a wholly owned subsidiary of Sega, due in part to the decline of packaged game sales worldwide in the 2010s. Sega began layoffs and closed five offices based in Europe and Australia on July 1, 2012. This was to focus on the digital game market, such as PC and mobile devices. Sega gradually reduced its arcade centers from 450 in 2005 to around 200 in 2015. In the mobile market, Sega released its first app on the iTunes Store with a version of Super Monkey Ball in 2008. The Western lineup consisted of emulations of games and pay-to-play apps, which were eventually overshadowed by more social and free-to-play games, leading to 19 older mobile games being pulled due to quality concerns in May 2015. In 2012, Sega also began acquiring studios for mobile development, with studios such as Hardlight, Three Rings Design, and Demiurge Studios becoming fully owned subsidiaries. To streamline operations, Sega established operational firms for each of its businesses in the 2010s. In 2012, Sega established Sega Networks as a subsidiary company for its mobile games. The same year, Sega Entertainment was established for Sega's amusement facility business. 
In January 2015, Sega of America announced their relocation from San Francisco to Atlas USA's headquarters in Irvine, California, which was completed later that year. Over the course of the existence of Sega Sammy Holdings to 2015, Sega's operating income generally saw improvements compared to Sega's past financial problems, but was not profitable every year of operation. Topic. Restructuring 2015 present. In April 2015, Sega Corporation was reorganized into Sega Group, one of three groups of Sega Sammy Holdings. Sega Holdings Co., Ltd. was established, with four business sectors under its organization. Haruki Satomi, son of Hajime Satomi, took office as president and CEO of the company in April 2015. Sega Games Co., Ltd became the legal name of Sega Corporation and continues to manage home video games, while Sega Interactive Co., Ltd. was founded to take control of the arcade division. Sega Networks merged with Sega Games Co., Ltd. in 2015. At the Tokyo Game Show in September 2016, Sega announced that they had acquired the intellectual property and development rights to all games developed and published by Technosoft. Sega Sammy Holdings announced in April 2017 that it would relocate its head office functions and domestic subsidiaries located in the Tokyo metropolitan area to Shinagawa Ku by January 2018. This was to consolidate scattered head office functions including Sega Sammy Holdings, Sammy Corporation, Sega Holdings, Sega Games, Atlas, Sammy Network, and Darts Live. Sega's previous headquarters in Oda was sold in 2019 and will likely be torn down. Ian Curran, a former executive at THQ and Acclaim Entertainment, replaced John Chang as president and COO of Sega of America in August 2018, following a 70% fall in profits for the 2018 fiscal year in comparison to the previous year, despite a 35% increase in the sale of console games and success in its PC game business. Sega announced that it would focus on releases for its existing intellectual property instead of of new ones. Sega blamed the loss on miscalculations of the market and having too many games under development. Projects in development at Sega include a new game in the Yakuza series, Persona 5 Scramble, The Phantom Strikers, the Sonic the Hedgehog film, and the Sega Genesis Mini. In 2019, Sega acquired Two Point Studios, known for its positively reviewed Two Point Hospital. Topic. Corporate structure Sega's main headquarters is in Shinagawa-ku, Tokyo, Japan. Additionally, Sega has offices in Irvine, California as Sega of America, and in London as Sega Europe, as well as in Seoul, South Korea as Sega Publishing Korea and in Singapore, Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Taipei. In other regions, Sega has contracted distributors for its games and consoles, such as Tectoy in Brazil. Sega has had offices in France, Germany, Spain, and Australia. Those markets have since contracted distributors. Relations between the different regional offices of Sega have not always been smooth. In the 1990s, some of this conflict may have been caused by Sega President Nakayama and his admiration for Sega of America, according to Kalinske. There were some guys in the executive suites who really didn't like that Nakayama in particular appeared to favor the U.S. executives. A lot of the Japanese executives were maybe a little jealous, and I think some of that played into the decisions that were made. By contrast, author Stephen L. Kent stated that Nakayama bullied American executives and that Nakayama believed the Japanese executives made the best decisions. He also stated that Kalinsky, Stoller, and more dreaded meeting with Sega of Japan executives during their times as CEO of Sega of America. <laughs> 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 
Topic: Subsidiaries of Sega Holdings Co. Limited. After the formation of the Sega Group structure in 2015 and the founding of Sega Holdings, the former Sega Corporation was renamed as Sega Games Co. Limited. Under this structure, Sega Games is responsible for the home video game market and consumer development. Sega Games also includes Sega Networks, which handles game development for smartphones. Sega currently develops and publishes games for major video game consoles, and has not expressed interest in developing its own consoles again. According to former Sega of Europe CEO Mike Brogan, there is no future in selling hardware. In any market, through competition, the hardware eventually becomes a commodity. If a company has to sell hardware then it should only be to leverage software, even if that means taking a hit on the hardware. Sega Interactive Co., Ltd. is the current company responsible for Sega's arcade game business. Sega Toys Co., Ltd. serves as a producer of toys. Sega Toys have created toys for children's franchises such as Osher Maho, Love and Barry, Mushiking, King of the Beatles, Lil Pri, Bakugan, Jewel Pet, Rilu Rilu Fairylu, Dinosaur King and Hero Bank. Products by Sega Toys released in the West include the Homestar and the iDog. Sega Toys also inherited the Sega Pico handheld system and produced software for the console. Sega has operations of bowling alleys and arcades through its Sega Entertainment Co., Ltd. subsidiary. The company's Darts Live subsidiary is involved with electronic darts games, while Sega Logistics Service is focused on the distribution and repair of arcade games. In 2015, Sega and the Japanese advertising agency Hakuhodo, formed a joint venture called Stories LLC with the purpose of creating branded entertainment for film and TV. Stories LLC has exclusive licensing rights to adapt Sega properties into film and television. Properties in production reportedly include Shinobi, Golden Axe, Virtua Fighter, The House of the Dead, and Crazy Taxi. Topic software research and development As a games publisher, Sega produces games through its research and development teams. The Sonic the Hedgehog franchise, maintained through Sega's Sonic Team division, is one of the best-selling franchises in the history of video games. Some games produced by Sega, such as those from Sega Technical Institute from 1991 to 1996, and games produced by Sega's subsidiary companies in the Dreamcast era, have been recognized for their creativity. Sega has also acquired third-party studios that are now owned by the company, including Amplitude Studios, Atlas, Creative Assembly, Demiurge Studios, Hardlight, Relic Entertainment, Sports Interactive, and Two Point Studios. Sega's software research and development teams originated with one development division operating under Sega's longtime head of R&D, Hisashi Suzuki. As the market increased for home video game consoles, Sega expanded with three consumer development CS divisions, while after October 1983, arcade development expanded to three teams, Sega DD No. 1, 2, and 3. Some time after the release of Power Drift, the company restructured its teams again as the Sega Amusement Machine Research and Development Teams, or AM Teams. Each arcade division was segregated, and a rivalry existed between the arcade and consumer development divisions. In what has been called, a brief moment of remarkable creativity, in 2000, Sega restructured its arcade and console development teams into nine semi-autonomous studios headed by the company's top designers. Studios included United Game Artists, Hitmaker, Smilebit, Overworks, Sega AM2, and Sonic Team. Sega's design houses were encouraged to experiment and benefited from a relatively lax approval process. After taking over as company president in 2003, Hisao Oguchi announced his intention to consolidate Sega's studios. 
Prior to the acquisition by SAMI, Sega began the process of re-integrating its subsidiaries into the main company. Sega still operates first-party studios as departments of its research and development division. Sonic Team exists as Sega's CS2 Research and Development Department, while Sega's CS3 Department has developed games such as Fantasy Star Online 2, and Sega Interactive's AM2 Department has more recently worked on projects such as smartphone game Soul Reverse Zero. Toshihiro Nagoshi, formerly the head of Amusement Vision, continues to be involved with research and development as Sega's chief creative officer while personally working on the Yakuza series. Topic. Legacy Sega is the world's most prolific arcade game producer, having developed more than 500 games, 70 franchises, and 20 arcade system boards since 1981. It has been recognized by Guinness World Records for this achievement. The Sega Genesis is often ranked among the best consoles in history. In 2014, use gamers Jeremy Parrish credited it for galvanizing the market by breaking Nintendo's near monopoly, helping create modern sports game franchises, and popularizing television games in the UK. Kalinske felt Sega had innovated by developing games for an older demographic and pioneering the street date concept with the simultaneous North American and European release of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Sega of America's marketing campaign for the Genesis influenced marketing for later consoles. Despite its commercial failure, the Saturn is well regarded for its library, though it has been criticized for a lack of high profile franchise releases. Edge wrote that, Hardened loyalists continue to reminisce about the console that brought forth games like Burning Rangers, Guardian Heroes, Dragon Force, and Panzer Dragoon Saga. Sega's management was criticized for its handling of the Saturn. According to Greg Seward of OneUp.com, the Saturn will go down in history as one of the most troubled, and greatest, systems of all time. The Dreamcast is remembered for being ahead of its time, with several concepts that became standard in consoles, such as motion controls and online functionality. His demise has been connected with transitions in the video game industry. In 1001 Video Games You Must Play Before You Die, Duncan Harris wrote that the Dreamcast's end signaled the demise of arcade gaming culture. Sega's console gave hope that things were not about to change for the worse and that the tenets of fast fun and bright, attractive graphics were not about to sink into a brown and green bog of realistic war games. Parrish contrasted the Dreamcast's diverse library with the suffocating sense of conservatism that pervaded the industry in the following decade. In Eurogamer, Damien McFerrin wrote that Sega's decisions in the late 1990s were a tragic spectacle of overconfidence and woefully misguided business practice. Travis Fass of IGN noted that since the Sammy takeover Sega had developed fewer games and outsourced to more Western studios, and that its arcade operations had been significantly reduced. Nonetheless, he wrote, Sega was one of the most active, creative, and productive developers the industry has ever known, and nothing that can happen to their name since will change that. In 2015, Sega president Haruki Satomi told Famitsu that, in the previous 10 years, Sega had betrayed the trust of older fans and that he hoped to re-establish the Sega brand. In his 2018 book The Sega Arcade Revolution, Horowitz connected Sega's decline in arcades after 1995 with broader industry changes. He argued that its most serious problems came from the loss of its creative talent, particularly Yuji Naka and Yu Suzuki, after the Sami takeover. However, he noted that, as of this writing, Sega is in its best financial shape of the past two decades. The company has endured. Topic. See also 
List of Sega video game consoles List of Sega video game franchises Lists of Sega games Sega Pinball Sega S.A. Sonic equals equals notes <laughs>